Wall Street ends lower for the fourth straight day on renewed fears of contagion risk from the banking sector. Dow Jones turns negative for 2023 futures, however, marginally recover after tech major Apple reports a better than expected second quarter earnings. The European Central Bank hikes rates by 25 basis points on expected lines. President Lagarde reiterates that the inflation outlook is too high for too long. European markets fall with the British FTSE sliding over 1%. Stocks in the Asia-Pacific trade mixed. Japanese and South Korean markets remain shut for a holiday. The HX Nifty suggests a weaker start for the Indian market. Oil prices recover slightly with the Brent trading at around $72 per barrel, but crude heads for a weekly loss. Domestic gold prices hit record highs on the back of near all-time high global prices. Banking sector fears prompt safe haven buying. Hero Motor Corp reports a strong set of fourth quarter earnings with an all-round beat. Margin expands by 180 basis points on a year-on-year -year basis. FMCG major Britannia, Marico. Uh, and Bharat Forge are also expected to report their earnings over the course of the day today. Good morning, everyone. In the Mumbai News Center, I'm Sonal Bhutra. You're watching Power Breakfast, last day of the trading week. It's a Friday, so something to cheer about. Uh, but that's not what we're seeing in the global markets. They're mostly in the negative. So let's take a look at what's happening in the Asian markets first up, and then we'll discuss the other global markets. Uh, it's a mixed picture here. So why we have the Taiwanese index higher, and so is the Hang Seng, which is up 1% right now. Uh, the other indices are seeing some cuts. Remember, Nikai shut for a holiday yet again. It's been a long holiday for the Nikkei markets. Uh, but apart from that, if we look at something like a Straits Times, it's lower in trade today. Um, the Shanghai too is lower as we speak right now. Uh, so it's a mixed picture. Uh, Hang Seng though is seeing uh, major gains right now as we speak. The SGX Nifty will come up for you on the screen and that one is indicating that the start for our own markets could be in the red. But that is what it indicated yesterday as well. But our markets closed higher by 160 points. So we'll have to see uh, whether the impact of global markets be seen on our own markets today as well. Uh, because uh, that is not what we've been seeing in last couple of trading sessions. 37 points lower. That's what the SGX Nifty is indicating right now. Uh, but with that, we'll move on. And talk about the U.S. markets because Wall Street closed lower for the fourth consecutive session on renewed fears of a contagion from the crisis in the regional banking sector with Los Angeles-based lender PacWest shares falling over 50% and Western Alliance falling nearly 40%. With yesterday's fall, the Dow Jones index has also turned negative for the year. In some important macro data, U.S. jobless claims hit a six-week high at 2,42,000 for the week ending on the 29th of April compared to 2,29,000 a week ago. CNBC's Contessa Brewer gets us a wrap of all the action on Wall Street. For CNBC TV 18, I'm Contessa Brewer. A rough day on Wall Street with the major averages closing lower across the board as investors worry about the ongoing banking turmoil. The Dow fell more than 200 points, driven lower by shares of Walt Disney. The S&P ended the session in negative territory as nine sectors closed lower. And the tech-heavy Nasdaq finished down about half a percent. Regional banks coming under pressure again just days after First Republic became the third lender to collapse since March. Shares of PacWest lost more than half their value, while Western Alliance and First Horizon both sunk over 30 percent. The sector's been hit especially hard by the Federal Reserve's aggressive rate hikes over the past year. Meanwhile, Johnson & Johnson's consumer health spinoff company, Kenview, started trading on the New York Stock Exchange. The stock jumped over 20% in its public market debut, making it the biggest U.S. initial public offering in more than a year. That's what's happening here in the United States. I'll send it back to you in Mumbai. Okay, thank you so much for that analysis. So that's the update as far as U.S. markets are concerned. But with the stress in regional banks giving rise to renewed contagion fears, let's hear out what former Federal Reserve Vice Chairman Roger Fogusen had to say on the Fed having to play a balancing act between fighting inflation and also ensuring the stability of the banking sector. They are trying to separate out um, the need to control inflation by raising rates. It's the only tool they have from the question of financial stability. And they're arguing that their bank uh, oversight tools are working very well. And they have a point of view, I'm not sure one agrees with it, and I'm not sure I do, that the banking system is overall stable. I would say certainly, you know, the, the banks are well capitalized, but we see a lot of anxiety around the small and medium-sized banks. 
And I think to some degree, you know, they're not focusing in on that. Now, let's be very, very clear. Um, you know, their first job is uh, inflation. They are worried about that. But I do think they could be more nuanced and more subtle in their communication and maybe give a little bit more nod to and recognition of the strains in the financial system and not simply say that, you know, everything is fine, because well, the evidence from the market, at least, is there's anxiety. Okay, do not think that the banking uh, system is entirely stable. That's an important comment coming in. Uh, let's also hear out what J.P. Morgan's global head of macro research makes of the current state of the U.S. market. The past cycles, going back 50 years, 60 years, uh, market was typically good short either right at the last hike, i.e. potentially that was yesterday, or at the first cut, which could be in three months, could be in a month, could be in six months. And so it's a question of how do you think about that potential lag. But uh, that's what history suggests. And to me, I think the picture is, you know, when I think bigger picture, the fact that you got an earnings cycle that remains under pressure, you have a market that is trading already at a relatively high multiple with a lot of these good mega cap tech stocks pretty crowded, very narrow leadership, banking crisis, which maybe parts of it are fixed, but maybe parts are not. Uh, and the fact that central banks are still sort of hiking it, it's not just the Fed, but also ECB. I think it's just a very tricky outlook. Okay, moving on, uh, talking about some individual stocks, Apple also reported second quarter earnings yesterday with numbers beating street estimates driven by stronger than expected iPhone sales. Total sales, however, fell for the second quarter in a row. Apple CEO Tim Cook also told CNBC the quarter was better than expected. Shares of Apple rose about 2% in extended trade. With that, moving on to the final update on our global market wrap this morning. European markets ended Thursday's trading session lower, with the French CAC down 63 points, the German DAX losing about 81 points, and the British FTSE sliding over 1%. The European Central Bank raised rates by 25 basis points on Thursday. The ECB's main deposit rate now is up 3.25%. In a press conference after the decision, ECB President Christine Lagarde said that it is very clear they are not pausing right now because they continue to have more ground to cover. Commenting on inflation, she added that the outlook continues to be too high for too long. All right, that's the global market action. A lot that happened overnight, but uh, how will these cues impact our own markets? We have a research team to tell you just that. Uh, Vivek, Surbi and Nigel are joining us today morning. Uh, happy Friday to all of you guys. Uh, Vivek, let me come across to you. What is the market setup looking like today? Well, good morning and, uh, you know, wish you the same. So, you know, what mm -hmm. we're actually looking at today is quite a muted uh, handover as far as the global markets are concerned. Uh, so, U.S. markets actually have ended lower now for the fourth straight session. Uh, and post, you know, the market close yesterday, Apple has delivered quite a blowout set of results, so good numbers coming in there, like you mentioned. All of the U.S. indices ending lower. Now, when you're talking about the European markets, you know, there too you saw a bit of a cut after the fact that uh, the ECB went over went ahead and delivered a 25 basis point uh, rate hike over there as well. Crude oil prices yesterday stabilized, and this is after a sharp two-day fall that you saw, and Brent futures now trading closer to the $72.5 a barrel mark. But coming closer home, you know, the Indian markets have been extremely resilient. Indian markets yesterday ended with gains turned positive for 2023, and in fact, above the 18,200 level is where the Nifty is perched at currently. So very strong uh, sentiment as far as our own markets are concerned. Now, what is it that... Uh, will drive markets today quite a lot of news flow along with that you know, the results reaction of uh, you know names like Hero Motor TVS Motor as well as uh, United Breweries also watch out for some key results in the session today Britannia Bharat Forge Marico top among them uh, Asian markets you know following the week handover are trading soft LGX Nifty 2 is indicating a muted start for our own markets Okay, muted start, but we'll see whether that continues or not. Thank you so much for that, Vivek. Uh, Sirbi is joining us uh, now. A lot of earnings to track. Uh, Sirbi is here with the list of stocks to watch out for in today's trading session. Sirbi? Hi, good morning. Thanks for that. So I'm tracking quite a few earnings today. The first one is Hero Motor. A good set of numbers there. It was a beat on all fronts. The revenue was up 12%. The EBITDA was up 22%. The operating margins came in at 13% versus a poll of 12%. Tata Power, decent set of numbers. The revenue was up 4%, EBITDA was up 3%, and EBITDA margins were maintained at 15.5%. Blue Star, a very strong set of numbers. The revenue was up 16%, EBITDA was up 25%, EBITDA margins have crossed the 6.5% mark, came in at 6.8%, and um, you know, board announced a bonus of 1 is to 1. 
United Breweries, a weak set of numbers. The revenue was up 3%. It saw a gross margin contraction of 1,000 basis points. The EBITDA was down 79%. And margins have come in at just 3% versus a poll of 9%. And lastly, Aptus Value Housing, the gross NPA has come in at 78 crores. The gross NPA ratio is at 1.15% versus 1.4% in the previous quarter. And the net NPA ratio is at 0.86%. Okay, all right, people are buying iPhones, but not alcohol. So uh, United Brewery is really weak set of numbers. But let me go across to Nigel, who's joining with all the cues from the FNO space. Hey, Nigel. Well, uh, morning, Sonal. Uh, you know, just looking at yesterday's intraday chart, everything that had to go right went right for the bulls. The call writers, they got stumped on the wrong side. And HDFC came out with a set of numbers, and that's why, because it was weekly expiry, we saw that big spurt in the final one hour of trade. The intraday chart will tell you the picture. The Nifty Bank, well, that's the one that did add a substantial amount of open interest build-up. So it appears there is long addition on that particular index. What did the FIs do? Well, they added some my long positions, 1,000 contracts or thereabouts, but they covered some shots. So they covered close to around 3,000 uh, sh short contracts. In the previous session, they added close to around 8,000 shots, and they covered close to around 35% of what they had in the previous session. The options data as well is looking quite encouraging. 18,200, 18,150 put between them. It added close to around 75 lakh shares odd. But put writing, I think, is getting a little bit too easy from a bullish perspective. On the call side, there was a fair bit of addition added on the 18,200 call with the premium at roughly around 130 rupees. Because the kind of put writing we've seen, the PCR from sub one, it's moved to around 1.34 odd. Now that's towards the upper end of the band. The Nifty Bank as well, we did see some bit of uh, writing at the 43,500 put. The premium out there between 200 to around 300 rupees is odd. The Nifty, well, important level you're looking at is the recent supports. That's 18,020 to around 18,050. We bounced off those marks earlier this week as well. But resistance we're seeing at around 18,250 to around 18,300. Now, the SGX Nifty suggesting a bit of a negative uh, tick. But, you know, getting into a weekend, I think uh, if you want to book some profits, take some money off the table it wouldn't hurt uh, going by the kind of cues that we had. Back to you. Okay, all right. Take that point. Nigel, Sirbi and Vivek, thank you so much for joining us and prepping us up for this trading day ahead. We'll take a short break and when we return, we'll talk about Hero Motor Corp that reported a strong set of fourth quarter numbers. We'll get to you all the analysis. Welcome back. Still tuned into Power Breakfast. It's time to talk about some important earnings that we are tracking this morning. Hero Motor Corp is in focus after posting a strong set of quarter four numbers. Sonia Shanoi is joining us with those details. Uh, Sonia, what are the numbers looking like? Well, thanks a lot for that. Hero Moto's earnings are strong on all parameters. It was a beat across the board. In fact, a revenue growth of 12% is what the company clocked in, but the big beat came on the margin front because of price hikes that the company undertook, along with uh, operating leverage as well. So the margins went up 180 basis points year on year, coming in at 13%. Now, uh, the profits for Hero Moto Corp were up almost 37%, coming in at 858 crores. And the volume growth this time was also quite good at about 7 odd percent at about 12.7 lakh units. Now the volume growth in Q4 was driven by a healthy demand both in the urban and the rural areas, traction during Navratri and channel filling ahead of the BS62 norms. Now the company had positive commentary as well. They said they expect the two-wheeler industry revenue growth to be double digit in the coming year and they are accelerating their electric vehicle rollout with a plan to be in 100 cities within this calendar year. Okay, all right. So that is about Hero Motor Corp. Good set of numbers reported by the company. Uh, moving on to Go Air because there are fresh troubles for cash-strapped airline. Go first as lessors seek to deregister 20 aircraft. Eight lessors of the airline have in fact already asked aviation regulator DGCA to deregister the planes. They are looking at deregistering the A320 and the A320 Neo aircraft models. The Dublin-based lesser Jiva Aviation has leased 10 planes to go first while SMBC Aviation has leased four and other ones, others one each. The aircraft are currently stationed at Kannur, Nagpur, Delhi, Hyderabad, Kolkata, Chennai and Mumbai. Of course, this is a developing story and we'll keep getting you more updates on this one. This is what's happening with Go Air or Go First right now. Time for a short break. Uh, up, uh, coming up next, lack of adequate government-owned coal storages in costlier private units leave Madhya Pradesh farmers more vulnerable to market fluctuations. A special report on the other side. 
Welcome back. You're still tuned into Power Breakfast on CNBC TV 18. Let's talk about some uh, important national news. As violence over a protest march by tribals in Manipur spread to capital Imphal, Manipur governor issued shoot at sight orders for extreme cases. The army and Assam rifles stepped up patrols. A curfew has been imposed in the entire state and internet has been suspended for five days. All this after violence broke between two communities during a tribal solidarity march. The situation continues to remain tense in the state. Okay, let's move on. Farmers in Madhya Pradesh are struggling for survival. This is either because of unseasonal rainfall has damaged crops or a bumper crop has sent market prices crashing. As part of our ongoing series, What's Ailing Rural India, CNBC TV 18 Santhya Gora reports that many farmers blame poor agri-infrastructure for a lot of their problems. This cold storage facility in Bhopal is one of six in the area. It is privately owned and managed like four others in the region. The only government-owned facility in the region is dedicated to dairy products, so even though using the government-run facility would cost a farmer 40 to 50 percent less than a private facility, not many farmers can avail the services. This means many vegetable and fruit farmers have to transport their produce long distances to delay spoiling. This poor infrastructure is a problem for farmers across the state, especially when farmers are dealing with crop damage and crashing market prices. According to the Madhya Pradesh government, there are 250 coal storages in the state, out of which only five belong to the state government. That's just 2% of the overall coal storages in the state. This shortage of coal storages, a crucial agri-infrastructure, makes the farmers of the state more vulnerable to market fluctuations. And at times of market price crash of various crops, this lack of affordable storage options pushes the farmers towards distress sale. The worst hit are the marginal farmers who own a maximum of one hectare of land and make up 48% of the state's farming community and small farmers who own between one and two hectares of land and account for 28% of this community. Then there are landless farmers like 40-year-old Dinesh Shaheria of Eat Khedi village in Bhopal. Under the state's Bhatia system, he farms the land of a large farmer, paying out of pocket for seeds, pesticides, fertilizers, transport and labor. He has to share one half of either his sale proceeds or his profits with his landlord, depending on the landlord's whims. In these circumstances, Dinesh cannot afford to store his crop in a private coal storage facility. So he has only one option during adverse market conditions, a distress sale. कोल स्टोर में होगा ये 20 रुपए एक कट्टी के उतारने को होगा ये 10 रुपए टोटल होगा ये 30 रुपए फिर लेने जाएंगे जब 10 रुपए बढ़ेगे हम माल के अब वहाँ से लान के बोरियाँ खराब हो जाती हैं तो वो बोरियाँ 15 रुपए की जो बोरी खरीदो फिर उसमें डालो फिर किराए से लाओ 30 रुपए जैसे 10 कट्टी की है मंडी तो 10 कट्टी के 300 उन्हें दो फिर उसमें से आठों में से वो दुकान में जिसकी दुकान पे जाएगी गाजर तो दूसरा हम माल लेगा दस रुपए कट्टी। Even large farmers say poor agri infrastructure is a big problem. Given the near absence of government-run facilities within a reasonable distance, only the significantly more expensive private facilities are available. Seventy-year-old Mansi Mali says he stopped using cold storage facilities over ten years ago. प्राइवेट में तो नहीं रख सकते और सरकारी है नहीं है सरकारी में पैसे कम लगेगा और हम इसमें प्राइवेट में रखेंगे तो हमारा खर्चा ज्यादा बढ़ जाएगा और प्राइवेट में पैसे मर्जी माँबाग पैसे लेते हैं वो तो The center and the state government have implemented schemes to ramp up coal storage and agri infra facilities in the state, but many of these facilities are either being built under the public-private partnership model or are being built and managed by private entities and cooperatives with the help of government grants, meaning usage costs may not come down. So farmers are likely to remain dependent on market forces and measures like minimum support prices and market intervention schemes to keep their livelihoods going. In Bhopal, Santya Gora. Santhya, that is such an important story. Thank you for bringing that to us. Uh, with that, we'll take your leave on this edition of Power Breakfast with the news that the HDX Nifty is indicating a lower start for the Indian markets, but it has recovered from the lows as we speak. Stay tuned. Bazaar Morning Call comes up next.